everybody, Joe Joseph here for thedailysheeple.com, and this is your new shot. The DailyMail.com has some unbelievable news, as there's a man out there, they say, that wants to bring the brain dead back to life. This scientist, whose life's work, it says, will be used by U.S. companies that are ready to start trials to reanimate living cadaver, cadavers in Latin America and guess what? They've already got volunteers. Human cadavers are brain dead individuals or in a persistent vegetative state, perhaps, you know, ones that are on life support with uh, what doctors say are no way that they're going to regain any sort of consciousness or life. So Dr. Sergey uh, Palian is his name. And this guy has been obsessed with studying and reversing the aging process. Um, and, you know, when, uh, I've said this a million times. When we start to play God, that's when we kind of, we really kind of start to cross that line that has consequences. Humanity is rife with this. You know, when human beings attempt to do things that, are really not within our power per se, or may have very dire consequences. I mean, think about this just for a second. What would life be like on this planet if people kept procreating and not dying? You know, death is a part of the natural cycle. And if we don't allow these things to naturally happen, then... You're going to have way too many people. You're going to have an imbalance in nature. And nature has a way of correcting itself. You know, you look at the uh, geologic record. Uh, you look at archaeology. And you can see a lot of accounts of when nature corrected itself. Or, you know, perhaps a depopulation took place for whatever reason. But there are plenty of times in history where this has taken place. So to do something that would exasperate um, issues, that's not good either. Okay, yeah, we don't die, but what's life going to be like on a planet that, you know, perhaps we go through our natural resources... Although I have to say, with the way that science is going, who knows, pretty soon we'll have replicators. A lot of people thought there was, oh, look at that on Star Trek. It's something, it's, a, it's a, an imaginary thing. I'm telling you, they're not that far off from understanding that type of technology and then beginning work to duplicate it. You know, with this now being able to send photons, teleport photons uh, over great distances, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, it's just a photon of light. No, you don't understand. Once they get the process down, even at a level as small as a photon, and they understand it, the rest is really all you're dealing with is time and resources, and it doesn't take that long. You know, it's like after you initially learn something for the first time, the second time, the third time you do it, the more you try to replicate it, the easier it gets. So... When I see news stories like this, it's a cause for concern because death is a natural part of things. It's a natural part of the, the cycle. You know, not to mention the fact from a spiritual standpoint, at least my cons in, in, in my belief is that why would I want to stay on this rock any longer than I have to when the next life really holds that much promise, you know, that much more promise. This life here, you know, when when you truly, at least doing what we do, when you walk the walk, it's tough. I know a lot of people in independent media right now that are just getting absolutely flambayed in their lives. And it's across the board. When you take this on, there's pushback. You know, spiritually, physically, mentally, it's it's there. It's crazy. So when I look at the next life or having to die, I'm not afraid of it. No, no, I don't hasten the day, but I certainly don't. Uh, I'm not going to try to circumvent it. That's for sure. 
but this doctor is. And it says Sergey Palian was only 14 years old when he was horrified by the death of his young, attractive neighbor in, T- in Tbilisi, Georgia. And as was the local Soviet custom at the time, her open coffin was carried through the street through the sound of music as a shocked teenager, Sergey, looked on. Confronted for the first time with the issue of his own mortality, it sparked a lifelong obsession with aging and how to reverse it. Now standing in his neat Florida laboratory that looks more like a dentist's office, the 66-year-old scientist explains how a lifetime of research has culminated in a purified extract he calls uh, bioquantines or uh, combinatorial biologics, incorporating other species such as frogs and, in the future, sharks that he believes is the key to curing diseases and even death. Now, I know a lot of people right off the bat will say, wow, you know what, this is kind of kind of hokey. You know, he's talking about swallowing frogs and sharks and or even parts of it or... Yeah, you know, whatever it is. But look it. God gave us, at least, all I can say is God gave us a natural cure for everything. A natural remedy exists for everything out there. No doubt. Why would it be out of the realm of possibility then to think that somebody couldn't come up with an anti-aging process that relied upon natural ingredients from frogs and sharks look at look at medical marijuana look at what that does for the human body all the cures you know all the treatments that are available through a natural plant one natural plant so to me it's not out of the realm of possibility that this guy may be onto something you know and why wouldn't you want to break free of big pharma any way you can I'm just saying. So if this ends up being something and somebody doesn't want to die and this goes forward, you know, first of all, this this technology, if it does come about and this guy is onto something, it's not going to be available to us. It's going to be priced so far out of our range that it's only going to be reserved for the very well off. That's that's first and foremost. Remember the Georgia Guidestones. The goal, according to R.C. Christian, was 500 million people on this planet. Well, they've already got it through Planned Parenthood and population controls in other first world countries and, you know, um, social campaigns and uh, propaganda that over the years have destroyed family, that has curtailed reproduction. Now every first world country in the world has a birth rate below 2.0. I mean, it's crazy. And a lot of countries now are faced with a crisis. They're going to have too many old people and not enough young people to pay for the old people. You know, so, hey, this might be a real possibility here for, you know, a real solution. But it's not going to be for us. It's going to be for the cream of the crop, the tippity top. That's who it's going to be for. And there are 500 million people. And after that, everybody else, the, the other six and a half billion of you, guess what? You missed the bus. No bueno, no more. So it remains to be seen, but this guy is trying real hard to get a government to approve testing on human cadavers to see if he can reverse brain dead or brain damage, you know, brain, actually bring brain dead people back to life, restore their brain. And if he can do that, he says, anti-aging's next. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at TheDailySheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody. 